hi so in this video i'm going to do my best to tell you everything you need to know about the kenyan troops and the m23 rebels in congo now the first time the m23 rebels attacked congo was from april 2012 to november 2013 a campaign that took one year and seven months there were about 6,000 men supported by both rwanda and uganda most likely the figure was higher as rwanda had sent in spies in goma a city of one million people on the border of rwanda and congo these rwandan civilians spied and passed on information to the m23 rebels during the conflict which drew in sadiq soldiers you know south african development community from tanzania south africa and malawi so about 973 to 1,000 M23 rebels killed. Tanzania, South Africa, and Malawi had about 3,500 troops and suffered few casualties. On the other hand, the size of the Congolese army, the FARDC, who are the defenders, is unknown, as occasionally militias, the Maimai militias, also participated in between attending to their daily activities to fighting the invading Banyarwanda, as they used to call them. Eventually, the M23 rebels captured Goma because Congolese soldiers far DC abandoned their positions. M23 later surrendered when Uganda's president, Museveni, met their leader and ordered them to retreat. This was seen as a statement from President Museveni to both Kagame and Congo as to who has influence over M23 and the minerals they control or help to loot through Uganda. So what is it that the M23 said they want? The group comprises of fighters from mostly the Tutsi tribe who settled in Congo from Rwanda about 100 to 150 years ago and they want recognition from the Congolese government as Congolese citizens. They also want to be part of the government in Kinshasa and have their own leaders appointed in key government positions. Now that we know what they want, what about Congo? So, for most Congolese who are in this case Bantus as opposed to Tutsis who are neurotic, they are against any suggestion of M23 being part of the Kinshasa government because the last time that happened or they allowed it, so the president Kabira senior assassinated by a Tutsi bodyguard. So they are totally against it and as for Congolese leaders, both the opposition and those in government, they have on many occasions rejected the claim of being Congolese citizens by the M23 Tutsis or the Banyamurenge as they call them. In other words, these M23 rebels, their families and their supporters are no longer Congolese citizens because these leaders sometimes say that these rebels picked up arms to join Rwanda to fight Congo, so automatically they lost their citizenship. Congo says that these fake Congolese fought alongside Rwanda in the late 90s to early 2000, when Rwanda and Uganda illegally invaded Congo and led to the deaths of more than 9 million real Congolese, and as such, giving back citizenship to invaders would be an Patriotic. M23 is widely understood to be backed by Rwanda. Uganda has also been accused of providing support. Both governments deny it. UN peacekeepers filmed 500 fighters entering Congo from Rwanda earlier this year. Rwandan soldiers have been photographed in areas held by M23. Their helmets have distinct plastic mounts for equipment, the same as those worn by some M23 fighters seen in this video released by the armed group. Look, I know what you're thinking, that maybe I'm biased, that maybe I like the Congolese people more than I like the Rwandans or the M23. But you have to understand that this is not just allegations by Congo or the Congolese people, but published reports and findings by independent groups working for the UN, working for the UN Security Council. And the only reason why Paul Kagame and Museveni get away with these crimes is because very powerful people in both the US and UK government support them in exchange for the, the access to these stolen minerals. 
Tony Breyer, for example, is one of the people lobbying for both Rwanda and a company that buys stolen coltan from Congo. Of course, they buy it from Rwanda. And the former UK Prime Minister defends his actions by quoting Rwanda's genocide, which evidence show Kagame was one responsible for it when he shot down a plane carrying Rwanda's president at the time. Another ex-leader or former president suspected to be supporting and lobbying for Kagame and Museveni in exchange for minerals is Bill Clinton. Now, unlike Tony Blair who admitted it, Bill Clinton has never been asked to confirm whether he does that for Rwanda. Either way, that's why you find Rwanda sends troops to Congo to capture a region specifically where Colton is mined using non-existent threat from FDRL labels and still gets away with it. Somewhere along the way, the SADC, you know, the South African Development Community, got tired of this game. And that's why Congo decided to join the East African community to see whether Kenya can put pressure on both Uganda and Rwanda to stop sending their troops to Congo to loot minerals. As for Kenya, they are well aware that it's impossible to bring peace to Congo or to stop Uganda or Rwanda's factions of M23 rebels from periodically using unjustified attacks as cover for looting minerals in Congo. Kenya is in Congo for an entirely different agenda. Kenya went in to cultivate a good image in Congo and among Congolese people so that Kenyan businesses and citizens can do business in Congo, which is already happening. It is said that uh, more than half of the Kenyan population originally came from Congo or they have links with those in Congo. But after colonization, those links disappeared and Kenya needs to create new relations through publicity and diplomacy, something that didn't work for them in Somalia but might work in Congo. In this long game of deception, there will be winners and losers. Kenya will definitely win. Congo's president, Felix Kisekedi, might use it for popularity during his re-election bid in the upcoming election. But the average Congolese and the average Rwandan citizens will be the losers in all this. Because as I record this, there are currently xenophobic attacks against Rwandans in Congo. And for the Congolese citizens, they have been victims of this proxy war over minerals for more than 25 years and it looks like it's not slowing down it's going to continue into the future